Hey everybody, so today I have this, <laughs> this Mac Mini. It's really dirty. I'm really sorry that it's really dirty. I tried to clean the front part of the Apple logo. It's, I really tried. It is ingrained. You can see it's surface level. I don't know if there's a scratch, but that dirt, that nastiness is actually ingrained on there. I tried cleaning, I tried alcohol, I tried using a toothbrush. I tried, I'm sorry, but you guys are gonna have to look at this. But anyways, it's in here for um, just a RAM upgrade, uh, nothing too special. This is the A1993 uh, 2018 Mac Mini. See, it has lots of nice ports. I think like, wow, it has a bunch of USB-C. We got a Thunderbolt, uh, four Thunderbolt ports, like HDMI, uh, Ethernet, etc. And it's very nice. And there's where the little fan goes. Looks like a little mouth. Looks kind of cool, right? So we're going to be doing a RAM upgrade for this one. Uh, it's not too difficult. This one's at least modular. This isn't the M1 version, so you can, this is more of like, you can just swap it out. It's pretty nice. So I'll be showing you how to do that. I don't know if I've ever really done it on the channel yet. So I think this just kind of pops up, right? You just grab, grab like a flat. It's been a while, so excuse me. Yep. Okay. There we go. There. So this comes up. Let's see a nice dust, dusty. This will also be good. We can clean out the fans. Uh, maybe they have a pet. This might be like a, this may be like dog or cat hair. This is definitely like uh, animal hair, so probably like a dog or cat. Let's clean this up. <laughs> I don't want to be around it. Luckily, I'm not allergic. Um, I actually had, I grew up with cats, so ever since I was a kid, I've always had a cat. My mom loves cats, so you're very used to them. Uh, dogs, I actually never had a dog. I wanted a dog when I was younger, but um, that didn't happen. So I've had a bunch probably since... I've been little, I would say, I had a, I had a black cat, all black cat, I had a tortoiseshell, tortoiseshell one which is kind of like a black and brown, and then I also had a tabby cat, and another one when I was really small, I don't really remember it too much, but uh, yeah, I had a bunch of those, and that's, we usually, they live pretty long, they live to like around 12 plus, I think each one was at least 12, I think I had cats for a while, um, yeah, so I'm kind of used to it, but this, there's something pulling here we're gonna open this up there's a cable so you always want to be careful whenever there's a cable it's dangerous you at least try to put it to the side see what it is and you want to be really careful so i see that there is uh, a screw that actually goes with that cable hopefully it's the same screwdriver and it is this is holding it down and i can see let's get this up i don't mind them. i'm not a big animal person but i don't mind it if they're there i don't mind them at all so so that's done now we want to remove i think the fan will be the next thing and then i think the major the main cable here which is i believe this is the power cable the dc in so let's move these but yeah oh uh totally got off topic there but Anyways, uh, for RAM upgrades, uh, this client actually is doing uh, virtual machines. I think he's using something called Parallels, which is a software. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's what he said he's doing. It's, so it is more RAM intensive, so they definitely want to upgrade. I think we're going to 8. I think we have 8 in here. I think we have two 4 gig sticks, and then we're going to a 16, if I'm not mistaken. I have a 16 right next to me. And, yeah, it's not a bad way to go, um, especially if you're going to be doing something this is actually a backup machine for him he has also an m1 uh, version of the mac mini which actually doesn't have removable anything uh, if, I'm, if i'm not mistaken i don't believe it has anything that's removable uh, everything's integrated which makes sense because it's m1 which is more like uh it's arm based and it's more like a phone and a tablet Sorry, so when you remove that you want to be careful of this there's a cable that goes underneath it's just you just pull it up it's very easy to damage any of these cables so if you're doing this just just be careful if you are going to be doing this or if you just want to watch me definitely listen to my nice stories <laughs> that i'm going to be telling but uh especially this, these cables right usually the cables what you want to do is just get up underneath it a bit and usually we want to go one side there's a piece of plastic you don't want to pull from the cable you won't pull from the plastic because then it makes it a little bit easier better this one's a little bit awkward there we go comes right up and then i believe we have to remove these two next if i'm not mistaken where's my screwdriver this big one should work there we go so this these two and i think this is going to help it remove from the actual display but i think isn't there one more yeah there's there's like that speaker cable here too 
You guys, can you guys see? Okay, there we go. That's better, huh? I was thinking of there's a speaker cable right here. You just want to use a little spludger. Don't want to remove that because that'll be easy to rip. All right, now we can pop this up. This should go this way, or just like that. Easy peasy, huh? All right, here's your assembly here. Nice nastiness. Kind of where the power goes. It's where you plug in your power cable. And yeah, it's power supply. Power cable, power supply. Makes sense, huh? And the rest actually comes out. So this is nice. It's very hefty. It's very nice, actually. It's a lot better than those nooks. If you ever see those Intel nooks, it's a lot nicer than that. So, all right. So we have this out. This is what a board looks like here. Pretty cool. Where's the RAM? Oh, the RAM's over here, right? This is shielded. The RAM's over here. So we'll see how many we have. I believe we have like four gigs. I believe we have eight gigs, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe two, four. I'm not sure. Uh, I didn't <laughs> really check. We'll find out anyway because we'll see the hardware that's there. So there's two more screws actually to go there. We'll continue. But anyway, so for RAM upgrades, there's a big misconception about RAM upgrades. We got a lot of calls about it all the time. And I don't know why, uh, but RAM is memory, right? It's random access memory. RAM isn't going to speed up the machine in the way that um, people think it actually is. Uh, an SSD is going to normally do that. Anyone that usually has a mechanical hard drive, it's best to actually get a solid state drive. We have lots of videos on our on a we have lots of videos on doing upgrades to solid state drives. So you can see they're huge. There's huge performances. We even have a video describing the differences between the two. And if you want to go ahead and check that out, they also do those repairs as well. A lot of the newer Macs, uh, especially the M1s, they all have SSDs. I think any MacBook Pro from 2013 and above has it. So most likely, if you have a Mac, if you're interested in doing these, you probably have one already. Um, I actually don't see a hard drive here, so I believe this is actually integrated too. The, the drive must be integrated on this one because I don't see it anywhere here because it would be obvious, right? So the drive is integrated here, so this one already has an SSD. You saw that popped up. That's okay. So let's see. We have two. Four, so we have eight gigs already. This is a four gigs module, and then we also have another four gig module. And uh, they're very specific too. Um, this one's PC PC four. So this is DDR four. It's twenty six sixty six. Oh man, two six six six. Oh man, I'm not gonna say what that number means, but anyways, that we're glad we're getting that out of here. If you're a game machine, you probably want to go more sixteen gigs. If you're going to be doing any type of workflow whatsoever. A minimum would be a good 16 gig is what we have here and uh, this is actually provided by the customer he just wants to just to install it i never heard of this brand before but it's called d duo make we so never heard of that before but uh, he wants us to install this and the thing is this is only um a single stick that's a 16 gig usually it's better to get dual channel memory you get a little bit better performance if you want to do that so always try to get maybe two sticks you can maybe get two eight gig sticks uh, that's why you even see the ones that come in here they have two four gig it's good to maybe get sets of pairs of two uh, for, for more efficient and there's and you don't even want to go into uh, the reasons why for that there's definitely videos on that you can go ahead and check it out or if you want me to make that I can make that video too describing dual channel RAM versus a single channel RAM so now we're going to put it in. Uh, you'll definitely know if it's not going to work is when you plug it in and you don't hear uh, and you hear a chime, but you don't see a display or you hear a bunch of beeps. That is definitely an indication that the RAM isn't compatible or there's a problem with the RAM or there's damaged slot or something. It's very easy to damage these pins in here. Very, very easy to do it. But just be careful. It goes one direction, one way, and the sticks only fit for one. So you can't mess it up. It's either DDR4, DDR3. The slot here is completely unique and it'll fit only one way. There's no other way to force it in. Uh, if it doesn't match up, it doesn't match up. So you know that. Always try to try to match your megahertz if you can too. Especially on Mac ones, they can be a little bit more uh, sensitive. Or if you also see um, some HP ones are actually very, very specific. We've actually seen some HP um, well, they'll have a part number actually on the, the RAM itself and they're very, very particular. Um, there are some Dell models that, that need DDR3L, which is a very specific and won't accept DDR3. Um, you'll also see that, and uh, it'll actually tell you on using on the board itself, it only accepts that because it's very strange, right? That will only accept that. You know what? Since I'm in here, might as well clean up this thing. We got this really cool one. We're trying to cut down a little bit, trying to be a little more eco friendly too at the same time, as well as save some money. But we got one of these little blowers. Right, it actually has a little nozzle here where you can actually switch up and down. 
uh, the pressure of it. So this would be nice to at least clean out the fan. Clean out a little bit of the dust there. Make it a lot cleaner. Especially the inside of the case, right? This is a pretty clean board though for, for what it is. Let's clean up the little power supply area just here. I don't know what we can do with the surface, but we're in control of at least the dust. So, but it's really nice. It's electronic, it charges, and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. I can make a review if you guys are interested in that on which one we have. It's actually pretty cool. But, uh, yeah. Um, going back to it. Now I'm just going to put this all back. It looks to be pretty good. RAM's been installed. It fits securely. Um, a good thing to do, we can also test it, obviously, before we fully put it back. But this one's so easy to put back in. There's not a whole lot of work, really, to be... Uh, involved here so we could just put it back I'm not sweating it too much there we go just there just like that snaps back in and we want to make sure we put in these two before we forget because it's really easy if you're running oh man I forgot I don't have sound now after I did this well your speaker cable is probably loose that's probably what it is or you forgot to put it back um, I want to put the cable back in so I feel a little bit better so I don't forget because cables are easy to forget all the time we'll make sure it's in all the way there we go and now I'm gonna put in the main screws just gonna be working backwards but it's really easy um, very straightforward repair I can't say anything's ever easy because uh, we have the, we have the hand for do it a million times but uh, it's, it's a pretty straightforward it's nothing super difficult nothing soldered here that we had to work with just very easy putting it back put it back in but actually we should clean this fan too right fans a little bit dirty you can see that I'm showing you guys on camera I don't want to do this but for other people but <coughs> very dusty we we like doing this with our repairs too, making sure we clean the fans it, it just as a courtesy um, it's always good to do that why not because we're in here and we can do it and we have our cool little tech tools to do that too um, I'm gonna do this first I'm gonna go plug this in first it'll be easier for me to put it back we'll make sure it's all the way in There, it's a cable. Uh, it's very easy to damage these cables. Be very careful if you're going to be doing this. And you want to go this way. I'm going to be plugging in the bottom first. Oops, actually, want to go up and then around. There we go. Yeah, if you're interested in speed performance and you have an older machine, maybe like older, I'm saying like 2012, then you definitely want to get an SSD. That's going to be the upgrade for you. If you're going to be doing anything else, uh, especially for any of the newer MacBooks, there's not a whole lot you can do. They already come with all the nice features and everything built in. Make sure you order it as you purchase it because you're not going to be able to upgrade. This is one of the very few ones that you can upgrade, and it's the only thing you saw. There's no other drive in there to upgrade. It's the only thing you can actually uh, upgrade itself. So if you're going to be doing it, do that configuration. They have prices because of that. They know that. So the base models are usually a lot cheaper. Um, and then once you do any type of upgrade, even 8 to 16 can be like $200. It could be like $300 just doing a basic one. <laughs> but they know that because anyone that wants any extra RAM or is going to be doing extra work is going to need that. Now this one I'm going to plug in this way, which is the same way we did before. You can grab a little tool. You can grab your finger. Perfect. So we hear that click, that's good. Now you can see, what is this for? If you see this, this is your Wi-Fi. So these are Wi-Fi antennas. It's gonna help you give another single signal. Um, if you don't plug this in or if you damage this part, well, you'll know because you'll, you might get a lower signal. And, but these are for the bigger screws are actually gonna fit on these. These little suction cups here, or I guess to hold it in. They're gonna be putting it in <laughs> that suction cup, but they're gonna put it in. It's just lining up with that and that should be it. There you go. Just put it on like that. Let's go ahead and see if it's going to go work. All right. So you see a 16 gigs RAM turning on Monterey Mac Mini. Looks pretty good. We actually got 2667 instead of the 2666. So looks pretty good. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on upgrading the RAM for the A1993 2018 Mac Mini. If you did, please leave a like. Really does help us a lot. Please subscribe for more content. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.